Let's continue our discussion about cellular respiration. Remember we said that there were two types of cellular respiration, anaerobic and aerobic respiration. Today we're going to discuss anaerobic respiration. It's a little bit more simplified and it typically happens in simpl simpler organisms, not as much in complex organisms. You'll see why in a second. Anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen. So organisms that are living in a very oxygen poor environment can still manage to get energy from their food sources. This occurs in the cytoplasm. This is also good for simplistic organisms that don't have complex structures such as a mitochondria in order to carry out aerobic respiration. There are two main reactions that occur during anaerobic respiration. We had said before that all of cellular respiration starts with glycolysis and now for anaerobic respiration we're going to add on a second reaction which we're going to generically call fermentation. The reason why? There are two types of fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation and alcoholic fermentation. We're going to go through the details of those now. The first type of fermentation we'll discuss is lactic acid fermentation. Some of you have maybe heard of lactic acid before, so this one should be kind of easy. During lactic acid fermentation, that end product of glycolysis called pyruvic acid has a lot of energy stored in it, but in the case of these organisms, they can't get anything else out of it. So it simply gets converted into lactic acid when there's no oxygen present. The issue is, is no additional ATP gets made. So the only ATP during anaerobic respiration gets made during glycolysis. And if you remember correctly, how many ATP did we have a net gain of? We had a net gain of two ATP. For every glucose molecule, they only gain two ATP. That's not a whole lot. So there are two main organisms that are gonna carry out lactic acid fermentation. The first one I'm going to go through is bacteria. Bacteria use this and are experts at carrying out lactic acid fermentation. We use what we call cultures of bacteria, just simple solutions of lots of bacteria growing to help us make cheese, sauerkraut, and even yogurt. That lactic acid gives it that kind of tart sort of flavor and it helps to make that wonderful product in a lot of those food products. Lactic acid fermentation can also be used by humans. And you might th be thinking to yourself, but I thought we were aerobic organisms. I thought we were complex. And that's where the issue comes in. Humans carry it out during strenuous exercise when we have very high demands of oxygen. Our muscles are using a lot of energy to carry out that exercise. And sometimes our blood just can't deliver enough oxygen to the muscles to keep them going to carry out aerobic respiration. So out of desperation, the body will take that extra pyruvic acid when there isn't enough oxygen present and convert it to lactic acid during lactic acid fermentation. That lactic acid is what helps to, well not helps really, but what causes that muscle burn. If you're working really, really hard and your muscles start burning, that's the lactic acid starting to build up. Once there's enough oxygen in the body and you've recovered a little bit, that lactic acid can go back into our chemical reactions and be used again and take that energy that's stored in it and go into the aerobic phase later on. We'll discuss that in a little bit more detail later. The key thing to understand is that during lactic acid fermentation or any type of fermentation, the only ATP that gets made is during glycolysis. We don't make any additional ATP here. We said there were two types of fermentation. Our second one is alcoholic fermentation. Alcoholic fermentation again starts with that pyruvic acid that came from glycolysis and it converts it into something called ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide. Ethyl alcohol is just that drinkable form of alcohol, not necessarily the rubbing alcohol that you use on a wound. Remember, this is anaerobic, so we don't have any oxygen that's needed for this reaction. And also remember, we said that during anaerobic respiration, the only ATP that gets made was during glycolysis. So during this phase, we don't make any additional ATP. So what are some things we can do with alcoholic fermentation? Well, the great organisms that carry out alcoholic fermentation are yeast, and they can do a whole bunch of things. Humans over time have learned how to harness this process of alcoholic fermentation from yeast 
and use it to make a lot of foods. We use it to help make bread. Now, the two products that we get, carbon dioxide and alcohol, help to make the bread. But in this case, we're not using enough of the sugar and enough of the process to get really alcohol out of it for the bread. But what we do use is the carbon dioxide. As the yeast carries out fermentation and the carbon dioxide gets produced in the dough for your bread, those bubbles get trapped and that's what helps to make the bread rise. We also use the products to make beer. And in the case of beer and champagne, we're fermenting the sugars in, in the case of beer, wheat and grains, and in champagne, grapes. So that's where our energy source came from. And what we get from it is the alcohol, which we typically think of in beer and champagne. And then we also harness that CO2. It gets trapped during the bottling process, and that's what helps to make it carbonated and bubbly. Wine, on the other hand, is a little different. You're still fermenting the grapes, and that's where your sugar is coming from. But in this case, they're only looking to get the alcohol. So instead of trapping the carbon dioxide inside the bottles, they let the carbon dioxide escape, and they're only capturing the alcohol in the solution. What I'd like you to do tonight is I'd like you to take your information from anaerobic respiration, and I'd like you to make a little concept diagram for yourselves in order to summarize the reactions.